The hymn that we sung to begin, O Come, O Come, Emmanuel, is part of those O Antiphons. And they express this grave desire, this longing, this pining for the coming of the Saviour. Let us look deep within and ask ourselves, are we really pining for Jesus to come among us? Are we really longing with all our hearts for Christ to truly be present among us? present in us and present in the world through us. Let's now worthy prepare ourselves to these great mysteries and so call to mind our sins. I confess to so Almighty God, God and to you my brothers, brothers and sisters that I have greatly sinned, sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault, and therefore I ask the many of virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, and sisters pray, pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Let us pray. O God, who see how your people faithfully await the feast of the Lord's nativity, enable us, we pray, to attain the joys of so great a salvation and to celebrate them always with solemn worship and glad rejoicing. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the prophet Isaiah. The Spirit of the Lord God is upon me, because the Lord has anointed me to bring good news to the poor. He has sent me to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives, and the opening of the prison to those who are bound, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor. I will greatly rejoice in the Lord. My soul shall exalt in my God, for he has clothed me with the garments of salvation. He has covered me with the robe of righteousness. As a bridegroom decks himself like a priest with a beautiful headdress, and as the bride adorns herself with her jewels. For as the earth brings forth its sprouts, and as a garden causes what is sown it in to sprout up. So the Lord God will cause righteousness and praise. 
to sprout up before all nations. The word of the Lord. And thanks be to God. Our response is, My soul shall exalt in my God. Together, My, my soul, soul shall exalt in my God. My soul magnifies the Lord, and my spirit rejoices in God my Saviour. For he has looked, looked on the humble estate of his servant. For behold, from now on all generations will call me blessed. A response, my soul, my soul shall be in my God. For he who is mighty has done great things for me, and holy is his name. And his mercy is for those who fear him from generation to generation. A response My soul shall exalt in my God. He has filled with the hungry with good things, and rich he has sent away empty. He has helped his servant Israel in remembrance of his mercy. A response my soul shall be exalt in my God. A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Thessalonians. Brethren, rejoice always without ceasing. Give thanks in all circumstances. For this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you. Do not quench in spirit. Do not despise prophecies, but test everything. Hold fast what is good. Abstain from every form of evil. Now may the God of peace himself sanctify you completely. And may your whole spirit and soul and body be kept blameless at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. He who calls you is faithful. He will surely do it. The word of the Lord. Thanks Thanks be to God. God. Please stand for the gospel acclamation. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. The spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me to proclaim good news to the poor. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. The Lord be with you and, and with your spirit. spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, o Lord. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. He came as a witness to bear witness about the light that all might believe through him. He was not the light, but came to bear witness about the light. And this is a testimony of John. When the Jews sent priests and Levites from Jerusalem to ask him, Who are you? He confessed and did not deny, but confessed, I am not the Christ. And they asked him, What then? Are you Elijah? He said, I am not. Are you the prophet? And he answered, No. So they said to him, Who are you? We need to give an answer to those who sent us. What do you say about yourself? He said, I am the voice of one crying out in the wilderness. Make straight the way of the Lord. As the prophet Isaiah said, Now they had been sent from the Pharisees. They asked him, Then why are you baptizing? If you are neither the Christ, nor Elijah, nor the prophet. John answered them, I baptize with water. But among you stands one you do not know, even he who comes after me, 
the strap on whose sandal I am not worthy to untie. These things took place in Bethany across the Jordan where John was baptizing. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to Lord Jesus Christ. Christ. My dear brothers and sisters, as we hear the readings of today, we are filled with a sense of the mystery that God is trying to reveal to us through the hastening of the coming of His Son. In these days, as we prepare more intently to enter into that mystery, the mystery of the coming of Jesus as a man, His incarnation, we need to pay careful attention to the words that the Gospel gives to us. The Gospel speaks about John as being someone who attracted crowds of people who came to him and they wanted to be baptized. They looked toward John in order to find that missing piece of the puzzle within them. They were from the, from the group of the Pharisees, they were from the group of the, the tax collectors and various different kinds of people from all walks of life were making their way out because it was not in the city. It was at a place called Bethany across the Jordan where John was baptizing. People would actually go out there and expect to receive from him these soul-stirring words. When John called these people to repentance, he spoke the truth to them and he called their attention to the inadequate way in which they related to God. And the repentance that this cause was genuine, they begged him to baptize them, to baptize them with the forgiveness of sins. Prior to this, they believed only that this forgiveness would come directly from God. But this forgiveness was hastened by John. And John did this by speaking the truth to them and by challenging them to renew the way in which that they lived. My dear brothers and sisters, we need to look within ourselves. Do we tune in to the correction that comes to us through the people who live around us? Are we comfortable with receiving feedback that is negative about ourselves? Is it even in our, in our nature? To consider that we could be wrong in what we do. To consider that we could be committing errors that cause us to move far away from the practice of our faith. Very often we are of the opinion that we are capable of no wrong. It does not happen in a very spectacular manner but in very subtle ways. We do not like to be correct. And this is the truth of our times. It is true about us as individuals. It is true about us as a society. It is true of us. When we look at the politics of the land, it is true about us. When we look at the, the practice of charity and the faith, the practice of, of all forms of giving, we do not like to be corrected. We do not like to be corrected about the way we live our lives. We don't want to be judged in inverted commas. And today that has become such a buzzword don't judge me. Don't tell me what is right and what is wrong. How can you know what is happening inside my heart? How can you know what is happening between me and the person that I'm relating to? We have given ourselves towards relativism. There is no belief in the truth, but I make my own truth. And this is so true. We believe that we make the rules as we go along and that we can never be wrong. And this is what John called the people's attention to. These words are directed toward us because when people correct us, it depends on who the person is. If it is someone who is an expert and authority, as the Pharisees wanted to know, who are you? Are you the prophet? Are you Elijah? The prophet is a reference to Exodus and Deuteronomy where God promises to the people 
that he will raise a prophet like Moses among them. Just as Moses led them across the barren desert, so would this prophet lead them in the future. The reference to Elijah is again made in the book of the prophets where it is prophesied that Elijah would return. As you know, he doesn't die a natural death. Rather, Elijah is carried up in a flaming chariot toward heaven. And it is said that when the Messiah was to come, Elijah would come to pave the way for him. And so the Pharisees were looking for authority. They asked John, who are you? Are you Elijah? Are you the prophet? Then what gives you the right to correct us? In our lives, we want to know who's correcting us. Are you my parent? Are you my father? That you can correct me? Are you the bishop? Are you, are you in charge of morality? Are you someone who's placed in authority? Are you a judge of the Supreme Court? Are you a judge of the High Court? Who has placed you above me? We question. How do you know what you think is right? And we have no love for the truth. And this leads us on the wrong path. It leads us to be callous about the coming of Christ. The second coming of Christ is not so much a spectacular event, but it is a big change of heart. A change of heart that allows us to accommodate the truth in all of its in all of its strength. Sometimes we are we're not happy with the truth. It makes us very uncomfortable. It challenges us. And so we don't like to hear it. We like to push it out. We don't like to speak about it. We don't speak truth to power. We don't speak truth to the people who should hear it. We don't like to correct our children as well. A lot of parents avoid correction for fear that they will traumatize their children. But the truth needs to be spoken in love. There is always a manner of doing it. And if you see the manner of John the Baptist, how does he do it? He says, I am one, I'm a voice that cries out in the wilderness. A voice that cries out in the wilderness, like the voice of our conscience that cries out in the wilderness. It is, it is a voice that tells us the truth about ourselves. And the wilderness is actually our hearts that is filled with the, with the distractions of this world. Uh, our minds that are filled with a hundred and million things to do. And a voice rises from there and calls us to pay attention to the truth. To pay attention to the fact that we are called to love. And therefore, my dear brothers and sisters, we who are baptized in the name of Jesus Christ himself and are preparing for his second coming, we want him to come that he may set straight our lives, our relationships, our society, that he would give us a lasting peace, a sense of living as brothers and sisters, a sense of the reign of God positively and actively, concretely among us. Are we really pining for this? Are we really longing for this? Or is it just a pipe dream, an idealistic thing that does not really happen? The whole of the Old Testament was preparing for this second coming. And therefore, the liturgical celebrations of the church, especially the Vespers, the evening prayer of the church, the even song, has the O antiphons. These antiphons express in various ways the desire for the people of God, of the people of God, for the Messiah. We long for you. Come, O root of David, O key of wisdom, and so many other beautiful images which are used for Jesus. Come and open up what has been closed by sin. Come and manifest God's love to us. It would be it would be really beautiful to really have a reflection on these antiphons. It suffices to say, the church affords us all these spiritual truths to enable us to hasten the coming of Jesus in our midst. Let us hearken to this spiritual calling. Let us give ourselves to waiting watching and being at the service of this God of ours who loves us very much. My dear brothers and sisters, let us now express our love for God as we profess 
the faith that we believe in, the creed. And we do this in a very special way during this Christmas season by praying the Nicene Creed, which really marks the development of our faith in this Jesus who is about to be born in our midst again. And so we say, I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things, things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father, through him all things were made, for us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the, by the Holy Spirit was his covenant of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have had no end. I believe that the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken to the prophets. I believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. I confess one baptism to the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of all the world to come. Blessed are you, Lord God, of all creation, for through your goodness we have received this bread we offer you. Through the earth and work of human hands, it will become for us the bread of life. As it Blessed is our God, God. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received this wine we offer you. Fruit of the vine and work of human hands, it will become for us our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. Pray, Brahm, that your sacrifice and mine may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice of the hands for the praise and glory of His name, for the glory of the Lord of the Church. May the sacrifice of our worship, Lord, we pray, be offered to you unceasingly to complete what was begun in sacred mystery and powerfully accomplish for us your saving work through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. Lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It, it is right, right and just. just. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For He assumed at His first coming the lowliness of human flesh, and so fulfilled the design you formed long ago, and opened for us the way to eternal salvation. That when He comes again in glory and majesty and all is at last made manifest. We who watch for that day may inherit the great promise in which now we dare to hope. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory as without end we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy,
You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, Lord, we humbly implore you by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more, giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The Mystery of Faith Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray upon the oblation of your church, and recognizing the sacrificial victim, by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself, grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son, and filled with his Holy Spirit, may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, and with all the saints, on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world, be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth with your servant Francis our Pope and Oswald our Bishop, the order of bishops, all the clergy and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who were pleasing to you as their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. Amen. At the Saviour's command, and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil, graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who sent your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you, look not on our sins, 
but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will who live and reign forever and ever Amen. the peace of the Lord be with you always and, and with your spirit. spirit let us offer one another a meaningful sign of peace yes, peace be with you Lamb of God you take away the sins, sins of the world have mercy on us Lamb of God you take away the sins of the world have mercy on us Lamb of God you take away the sins of the world grant us peace Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are we who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, Lord I'm not worthy in that you should have shut down 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 my roof, but I say your word and my soul shall be healed. We now make our spiritual communion with the Lord. O Lord Jesus, since I cannot now receive you in your sacramental presence, I beg you to come spiritually into my soul, to enrich me with your holy grace, and make me truly your own forever. O Jesus, living in Mary, come and live in me, in the spirit of your holiness, in the fullness of your power, in the communion of your mysteries, in the perfection of your ways. O Divine Guest, give to my soul a strong, lively faith, an unbounded trust, perfect humility, an abiding sorrow for my sins, a total abandonment to your Divine Will, and a perfect loving union with you in mind and heart. O Sacrament Most Holy, O Sacrament Divine, all praise and all thanksgiving be every moment Thine. Lord Jesus, thank You for the blessings and graces You have given me through this spiritual communion. Let us pray. We implore Your mercy, O Lord, that this divine sustenance may cleanse us of our faults and prepare us for the coming feast through Christ our Lord. Amen. Bow your heads and pray for God's blessing. May the Almighty and merciful God, by whose grace you have placed your faith in the first coming of His only begotten Son, and yearn for His coming again. Sanctify you by the radiance of Christ's advent and enrich you with his blessings. Amen. Amen. As you run the race of this present life, may he make you firm in faith, joyful in hope and active in charity. Amen. Amen. So that rejoicing now with devotion at the Redeemer's coming in the flesh, you may be endowed with the rich reward of eternal life when he comes again in majesty. Amen. Amen. And may the blessings of Almighty God the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit come down on you and remain with you forever. Amen. Amen. Go forth to live the gospel in your lives. Thanks, Thanks be to Lord. Lord. Jesus is the joy of living. He's the King of life to me. Unto Him my all I'm giving. Is forevermore to be. I will do what he commands me. Anywhere he leads, I'll go. Jesus is the joy of living. He's the dearest friend I know. 